What's that, the people? Nocturnal thoughts. Hey. Let me say this. After this fight, Teofimo Lopez versus Vasily Lomachenko. The takeover versus high tech. Now I'm starting to see in boxing why they say everybody is entitled to their own opinion. Because everybody opened up their mouth with something to say. And it's all over the place. Everybody's saying the same thing in different ways. No matter, no matter how you want to cut it, slice it, chop it up, no matter how you want to deliver it, at the end of the day, you cannot deny Lopez won the fight. So you can spin it, you can change the scorecards, you can change the commentation, you know what I'm saying? You could put blame over here, put blame over here, this person did this, this person didn't do that. I thought that this was going to happen, I thought that that was going to happen, you know, whatever you want to say. All the different little factors, whatever, all the ingredients that you want to put into it, at the end of the day, it tastes like victory for Lopez and, and the Lopez family. Period, point blank. So I'm going to say this. I'm going to give Teofima Lopez, junior and senior, but particularly mainly junior, I'm going to give junior the same advice that I gave to Andy Ruiz when he won against Anthony Joshua. Now is not the time to slack off and get comfortable. If you can take over, now is the time to take over. Stay 100% dedicated. Enjoy your victory. Stop smell the roses. Spend some quality time with your, with your family with your mother, your sister, your father, your new wife, things of that nature. Enjoy your belts and then put those belts off to the side. I like, a lot, you know, because I don't want to keep looking back in the past. This is the only part of the past I'm going to look back. I could look back a, at a lot of stuff that happened in the past in the build up to the fight, but I'm not going to do that. But one thing I do like about when they did the, um, the face off or they did the press conference, when they were showing Teofimo Lopez's highlights, he didn't even bother to look at him. He put his head down. And the guy was like, why didn't you look at the screen? Everybody had their eyes glued to the screen watching you knock out Richard Comey. Why were you looking down? He said, I was looking down because that's in the past. I want to look towards my future. It's the same thing. Right now, after this victory against Lomachenko, appreciate it. Look at it. In, in, in this present time, look at it, and then put it in the rearview mirror, you still have work to do. You know what I'm saying? And you, you so you young, if you're talking about a legacy, if you're talking about taking over, it's about your legacy. It's, it's about what's gonna happen in the future. And play, the, play, the, play it smart, it's chess, not checkers, but the main thing you have to do is stay focused, stay in shape, get stronger, get faster, and increase your IQ. You know what I'm saying? Sticking to the script. I know it's been a long time coming, 18 years of dedication, but it don't stop now. It don't stop now. It just begins now. This is only the beginning. You know what I'm saying? So do things smart, stay focused, stay hungry. You know what I mean? Stay hungry, stay disciplined, stay working on your craft, and finish the task. Don't come up short. You know what I mean? Don't come up short. Gracefully bow out. Don't let nobody tap you out when you turn into your 30s and, you know what I'm saying, mid-30s and whatnot. Stay focused. Stay grinding. So, uh, people talking about him moving up to 140. Oof. Y'all know that Josh Taylor, that's my dude. I know a lot of people in the community have a little bit of flack for some comments that Josh Taylor made that was supposed to be offensive. I never heard him. I didn't even do the research to find out to hear him. You know what I'm saying? I really don't try to get into the 
racial aspect behind boxing that much. Sometimes you just can't avoid it. But at the end of the day, I like a boxer based off of his skills, not based off of his complexion of his skin. I just, you know what I'm saying? I just can't go in that direction. People who didn't like Lomachenko, I'm like, I like, I like, like Lomachenko. And I had people coming on my comment that was talking about I was being racial against Lomachenko. If he was black, I would be putting him on this high, high pedestal. And I'm like, man, kick rocks. I think I deleted his shit off of my, I don't, I don't even think I kept his comments because it just, it offended me on a high level because if you pay attention to what I'm saying up to the fight, man, I'm giving Lomachenko as much credit as I can possibly give him. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, back to what I was saying. Josh Taylor. Josh Taylor is a damn problem at 140 pounds, period, point blank for anybody. I, I want to see this, this uh, Jose Ramirez fight and see how that pans out. But I'm leaning towards Josh Taylor, period, point blank. You know what I'm saying? Um, the only person I feel like is a big threat to Josh Taylor would be if he was to move up to a higher weight class, fight a Terrence Crawford. Or I don't know if Terrence Crawford would even bother to come down to 140 again, which I doubt it. You know, Terrence Crawford is high up on his horse all the time. He got business to take care of in the welterweight division anyway. We still need to see Terrence Bud Crawford fight Errol Spence. But speaking of Terrence Crawford, we did see that the fight is official November 17th for him to fight Kell Brook. That's going to be a solid fight. I can't wait to see that fight. A lot of people just count Kell Brook out because of the damage he took from Triple G and the damage he took from Errol Spence. I'm not so quick to count out Kell Brook yet, you know what I'm saying? But I do lean heavily towards Terrence Bud Crawford to win that fight. So I don't think I would be seeing a Terrence Bud Crawford versus Josh Taylor anytime soon. I think Josh Taylor versus Jose Ramirez is the best thing we're going to see right now. And um, if, if, if Teofimo Lopez came into the 140 division, had a couple of fights to get acclimated to that, to see how good his power transitions, to see how good his speed reflexes and everything like that transitions into the weight class, then him fighting a Josh Taylor, that would be a good fight. I have no idea how to call that fight if it ever comes into fruition. But then you also have all the young guns like the Devin Haney's coming up, you know what I'm saying, the Ryan Garcia's coming up, the Shakur Stevenson's coming up. Let all those young guys go fist to cuffs. And that's going to be very exciting. I think right now that Lopez is the cream of the crop. You got Javante Tank Davis going to fight Leo Santa Cruz. We're interested to see how that fight's going to turn out. I heavily favor and lean towards Javante Tank Davis. But recently I've been doing some thinking. And I'm not going to count out Leo Santa Cruz, not by a long shot. Because Leo Santa Cruz has a whole other reason to dedicate himself to this fight. He said him and his father always talked about him fighting Javante Tank Davis, and his father believed that he could beat Javante Tank Davis. And with his father recently passing away due to, um, I forget what illness, it was some kind of cancer, I believe, but he passed away. And you got Tio, uh, Leo, Leo Santa Cruz dedicating this fight to his father. That puts a different um, factor into the equation that I could never, ever, ever count out what that does to a person's uh, heart, mind, body, and soul when you're dedicating one, one mission, one night, one fight to somebody that plays so much of a role in your life. So I feel like Leo Santa Cruz can come in there and surprise all of us. You know what I'm saying? Javante Tank Davis, to me, and I'm not going to disrespect anything about Javante Tank Davis, but he was in a fat camp, period, point blank. He was in a fat camp. Javante Tank Davis lets himself get out of shape. Now, I'm watching his training footage because he looks like he was getting himself into phenomenal shape under the tutelage of, of um, Calvin and under the tutelage of Floyd Monday Mayweather. It looks like Javante Tank Davis is going to be ready for this fight. You know what I'm saying? You can never count out Javante Tank Davis just drops some hellacious bombs. I mean, he is a bomb dropper. He's like coming over and just dropping off bombs. I mean, it's hard not to get blew up by that type of shit. You're talking about going through a landmine and somebody dropping bombs at the same time. That's going to be a difficult fighter for anybody to beat, let alone Leo Santa Cruz, who's to me just got a smaller frame. It's a smaller frame. Uh, he might have a nice little reach advantage, and he has stamina. And Leo Santa Cruz has stamina, and Javante Tank Davis' stamina is in question. 
So that's going to be the big key. But I'm not going to just, right now, matter of fact, I'm going to say right now, I'm straight down the line and say 50-50 in my mind until it gets closer to the fight in Halloween and I'll make a big prediction. Also, we got Regis Progray. Regis Progray fighting on uh, October 31st. He's fighting against Juan Horaldez. And Horaldez is a pretty decent fighter. I mean, he has all the fundamentals. He might surprise us and take out the Rougarou. You never know. So anyway, but if we don't and we do see the Rougarou be victorious, you can have the Rougarou and um, that'd be a good name. A good name for uh, 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 Teofimo Lopez would be Regis Progre. Because I don't want to say that Leo, Leo, that uh, Teofimo Lopez should just come into the 140 and fight the biggest, baddest name like a Josh Taylor or anything like that. I think he should take a couple of fights just to get adjusted to that weight class. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, and I don't think, to be honest, I don't think Javante Tank Davis would do well in the 140 pounds. I think Javante Tank Davis needs to stay disciplined and stay at the 135. I know he, he kind of is busting out the seams, but it seems like to me when he gets put, his frame really doesn't do good putting on weight. I mean, he just mainly puffs out and, and gets out of shape. Whenever he adds a little weight to his frame, he just spills over his frame. He doesn't look like he can really move up in weight and stay in shape. He looks like he moves up in weight and he's out of shape, similar to Adrian Broner. Adrian Broner, he just, it's just all about genetics. It's weird. It's all about genetics. Um, Teofimo Lopez obviously can go up in weight and not spill over his frame. If he stayed disciplined and stayed at 135 for the remainder of his career, um, it would be a shorter career because eventually he's going to burn something out. He's going to burn out some things trying to maintain that weight. He has to move up to 140. If he takes his time and adjusts to 140 correctly, I think he still will have all the attributes he has at 135. He said he'll still keep his speed, his reflexes, his power. He could increase his power and maintain his stamina. He would be a threat. Um, Javante Tate Davis, if he moves up to 140, I think he'll slow down. Um, I think he would lose a lot of his stamina. You know, he, he would be a, for real, they say that right now, Javante Tate Davis is a is a five-round fighter, six-round fighter. If Javante Tate Davis tried to move up to 140, he would really be a six round fighter he would be a threat for the first six rounds and after that most people with some stamina would be able to take him to the deep waters and drown him Devin Haney different situation Devin Haney goes up to 140 he's a problem he's a problem against to me Devin Haney is a bigger problem in 140 against a Josh Taylor than uh, Teofima Lopez is you know what I'm saying depending on how Teofima Lopez would adjust to 140 what kind of what kind of, what kind of fighter he fighter he would be because styles make fights. And we're not going to see the same Teofimo Lopez at 140 that we just saw against Lomachenko. Lomachenko is a small dude. If you've seen Lomachenko standing up to Teofimo Lopez in that ring, Lomachenko almost looked like a little kid standing next to Teofimo Lopez. I mean, Teofimo Lopez, sometimes his frame of his shoulders didn't even stay in, inside the camera. It's like the dude just had a wide, wide cobra back. And you look at little Lo, little Lomachenko, I know his, his he, he kind of comes in, but he just... He just looked like a small kid compared to, um, he didn't even look that small compared to Linares. Jorge Linares was bigger than to, to, uh, Lomachenko, but Linares, he still, he, he didn't have a, a that big bulkiness to him. Um, he looked bigger than Lomachenko. I put it like that. Linares looked bigger than Lomachenko, but not in the same way as Lopez did. Lopez just looked more powerful than Lomachenko. You, you could just see the respect of the power of Lopez when Lomachenko was on his shoulder. Going, you know, people kept saying, why he's not going to the right? Why he's not going to the right? You can see how much power there was waiting there for, for him if he would have tried to go to it. Anyways, I'm not going to go there. I'm going to cut this video off because it's stretching out too long. Anyways, props to the young champion. Props to Vasily Lomachenko who, who uh, dared to be great. You know what I'm saying? And might have flew a little too close to the sun and lost his wings. But at the end of the day, man, nothing but respect for high-tech Vasil Lomachenko, Teofimo Lopez, good fight. Everybody, get your mind right. You know what I'm saying? Some of this stuff, 
makes me not even want to watch boxing no more. Like even when we was watching the Facility Facilino Machinko versus Teofimo Lopez, the announcer still had to make reference to Mayweather and try to say something negative about Mayweather to make Lomachenko look good while he was losing. I don't understand that in a boxing game. Like, just let the man fight his fight. If he lose, he lose. If he win, he win. Mayweather ain't got nothing to do with this. But he's like, well, you can see the dangers of trying to go up in the, and fight a, a, a young, you know, young bull. Uh, I'm paraphrasing, of course. But he's like, that's the difference between the Mayweather era, where it was all about business, versus the Lomachenko. It's all about boxing. So let's give him credit for taking a fight that he's losing in, just because, like, like Mayweather didn't fight Ricky Hatton, and Mayweather didn't fight uh, Cotto, and and Shane Mosley, and 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 Pacquiao, and uh, what's that young Canelo, and. Um, Victor Vicious Ortiz. I mean, stop it. Stop trying to make Mayweather look bad so you can make somebody else look good. Knock it off. I'm done. Nocturnal thoughts. Peace out.